Rabbi Braus, I wonder if you could address uh, the anti-Semitism coming from the left. I know you wrote a really powerful piece for us several months ago about the Black Lives Matter platform, and I wondered if you equate that kind of strong, harsh uh, policy statements against Israel as anti-Semitism. Hmm. <laughs> um, first, let me say that um, I, I believe that when we see a rise in attacks on vulnerable minority populations, when we see a rise in hate crimes, we concurrently see a rise in anti-Semitic attacks. And so if we think that we ought not be concerned because those who are being targeted right now um, are not primarily from our community, I think we have that, I believe that that's a terrible mistake. And I just want to give one example and then Danielle, I'll try to address your question. Um, there was a story a couple of weeks ago about a Muslim, a young Muslim student on the subway in New York who was uh, an 18-year-old riding on the train and a number of uh, angry, drunk men um, began to verbally assault her. She was wearing hijab and started to shout at her, go back to your own country, to which she responded, I'm from Brooklyn. And then, uh, and screamed and cursed and shouted, make America great again, make America great again. Um, and she said the most disturbing part of this was that nobody on the train stood up to support her or defend her. At the final paragraph of the story that was written about this, it said the following, that there had been 34 incidents um, between election day and November 27th in the city um, of hate crimes. 34, okay? Um, f compared, to, uh, compared to five in the, in the same period of the previous year. Five of those in in incidents were anti-gay, five others were anti-white, two targeted Muslims, one was anti-black, 18 of them were anti-Semitic in nature. 18 of 34 hate crimes. And so I just want to bring our attention to this because I don't believe that our community um, is, is really taking this as seriously as, as we need to be right now. Many people have noted that it's ironic that right now the left, the Jewish left, is calling the Jewish right to take anti-Semitism more seriously. That's not the way it usually goes in our community. Um, I, I agree with Jonathan. I think we see um, an antipathy toward, uh, toward Jewish privilege, toward Jewish power, and in some cases toward Jewish people coming both from the right and from the left. Um, I don't think that they are equivalent to one another. I think they're, they're both dangerous. Um, but they don't seem, to my uh, eyes right now, um, they don't seem equivalent to one another. Um, the anti-Semitism the anti -Semitism that I see coming from the left, which I believe is very real and very dangerous and needs to be addressed um, unequivocally, is almost entirely connected to, uh, to Israel and to disputes about Israeli policy and about the nature of Jewish power when it pertains to Israeli policy. The anti-Semitism that we see now coming from the right, which Jonathan described a little bit about this trolling, the, the gassing, these vile images of Jewish journalists and others, um, and incredibly threatening images, seem to be good old-fashioned blood DNA uh, anti-Semitism, right? It's in your blood, and, and the only way to eradicate it is to eradicate you. And so I believe that those are different. They could be equally pernicious, and if you're a college student, you know, just trying to get to Friday night services on campus, um, or going to, uh, walking out of second day Rosh Hashanah at University of Michigan, it doesn't really matter who's screaming at you and calling you a Nazi, but I believe that they are anti-Semitism of a different form. Thank you. Rabbi Siegel. Uh